needs, there's a need for change. It's my civic duty because I have the skill set that I feel I need to step up and, and try to change. What special talents or abilities do you possess that make you feel you would be a good sheriff? Now, the main one is I've been loyal to the Slane County my entire career. I've lived here 41 years, and uh, I'm a people person. I can love anybody from the age of two to my uh, biggest supporter over there, Donnie. Um, I can relate to each and every person in here. Uh, it's very important that we get on everybody's level and not just stick to our own. And uh, with, with that, uh, I believe that uh, we can make a bigger impact throughout the whole county. Um, I want to get us involved in our schools to support, to support them in case they might a younger generation to, to combat crime. Um, and just, just being loyal to the county, which is, which is what I've been for 14 years. What special talents or abilities do you possess that make you feel you would be a good sheriff? I would think of my management skills, uh, along with my ability to get people to do the work and the job without my ability to have people work for me and to do a good job. That's, that's one of my biggest traits. Also, I was born and raised in this community, and I protect what I love. I protect my homes, I protect my family, and I protect my community. I love all three of them, and that's the passion that I will bring to this position. It's important that people that's involved in this are going to protect and do what's right for each one of you and their own family. Thank you. Been in law enforcement for 34 years. In all that 34 years, I was never corrupted or never took a bribe, never took money, never did anything that was against the law. I held that as pride in myself. Badge is never tarnished. As you see it on my card and everything, you'll see that I have the experience. I'm very honest. It's a very good thing in the Sling County that I am very honest. I will be very visible. I will be out in your neighborhood. I will be here to your meetings. I will go to your ballparks. I will go to wherever you have any meetings at all. When you have your, your citizens' meetings, I will be there. I go to everything now. You will see me everywhere. I have no problem with showing up, giving you my time, day or night. I will have an open door policy as well. You can walk in my door, you can call me at night, 2 o'clock in the morning. When I was a fireman there that day and night, we were up at 2 or 3, 4 in the morning. As a sheriff, I will be the same way here. You're guaranteed that with me. You'll have your faith. I will be thinking of you day and night. Thanks. <coughs> special qualities that I have to be sheriff or I have business sense. Uh, I practice physical responsibility every day by my business. I've been in law enforcement for 25 years and honesty, I believe. Most of uh, all the people in here that know me know that I'm an honest person. I love this county and I'll work for you. My door will always be open to you. Thank you. What I have to offer to the Sling 
County Sheriff's Department and, and these people. I have worked for the Sheriff's Department for 13 years. This is my 13th year. I possess the skills that the rest of these guys may have some form of fashion, but I have worked the administrative side since 2008. <coughs> I know the ins and I know the outs. I work with our core and court. I know our budgets. I know what it takes to, to get these things through. I've worked patrol. I've worked all the way up. I've worked every aspect. There's a difference between being out there, being the regular patrol guy, and working the administrative side of the department. That's one thing that I do possess. And I can take this department where it needs to go. What we need is somebody that's been in business for 35 years and never been in law enforcement. I'll tell you why. I owe them nothing. I owe them nothing. I owe the people everything. So what we got to do is we got to stop the corruption within the department. So if we start there, then we can correct and get rid of the drug dealers. We can correct the problems we have in Saline County altogether. And uh, that's all I got to say. What special talents or abilities do I have to be sheriff? I was the sheriff for five years. In that tenure, we were able to turn back $1.6 million out of the operation of the jail. We were able to obtain a grant for $96,000 for an upgrade of computers in the patrol cars. Now to say that do we need more people? Sure we do. We're operating today as as it was when I was a sergeant with the state police and our county has grown from 68,000 when I came here to 117,000. But I also worked with the poor and and worked well with them. Some of them have told me personally that you were probably one of the best sheriffs of Saline County ever had. My door was always open. We were always transparent. You know, we were audited yearly by the state and all came back with great reviews. So those are just some of the, the abilities I have to be your next sheriff. All right, our next question, we'll start with Mr. Cooper. Could you describe your experience in jail operation? Yes, but first of all, I'd like to say, Mr. Goshen, you do owe these guys something because they are taxpayers of Slane County. And you do owe them something because they are in the part of the county. That, you're exactly right. So, uh, with that being said, I started right. off in the jail. If you're crooked, I don't owe you anything. I'm not. Right. Uh, I started off in the jail. You say something? You know, I've got time to talk. You can talk later. Uh, I started off in my career in the jail. Uh, so, I, I, I made contacts with every inmate that come through here. Uh, I know how they are, and I know what to expect from them. So, with that, I believe I have the ability. Thank you. Describe your experience in jail operating. Well, this will be quick. Uh, I've never worked in a jail. The only time that I go in there is when I'm taking prison. I reviewed their budget and reviewed their policies on how they uh, run the jail. Uh, I haven't been privy to their day to day uh, expenditures, but it's definitely one of the things that would be the first thing that I do when I get in there is to look at their day to day spending. Again, I've been privy to the so the numbers, the rest of the company. Right, so thank you very much. Many years ago when I was a Little Rock cop, I can't hardly remember that. It was some time ago when I was a Little Rock and Jacksonville police officer. We had two duties. You were a patrolman, you were also a jailer. We were in jail. We also ran an emergency service, which was an ambulance service. We had a, a jack of all trades there that we worked with. It was pretty good training that you had and everything. You were certified and everything. As a U.S. Marshal, the Marshal Service is identical to the Sheriff's Department. It's just on the federal level. You have no 
jails and all that you don't have. We housed people, we did everything. I've been hard for two years, connected on some people that did robberies and murders. For two years, we had to house these people when they went through court and trial. We moved people in the marshal service the same way, take them to court, in and out of court, the same system, no different. We serve process, do the same identical thing as the sheriff's department does. I have the experience, and I will do the job for you right. Thank you. One thing about it, if you start out in this, at, at working for a sheriff's office, and this is the majority of them, you normally start out working in the jail. I started out in the jail and worked my way up. I work with the administrative lieutenant that's in the detention side right now, the sergeants. I've done the budgets over there and helped them as well. Uh, I will say that the jail is one of the hardest places within the sheriff's department to work. If y'all understood just a little bit about what those people that work in the jail have to put up with on a daily basis. I wouldn't want to go back to working in the jail. Uh, I'm telling you that now. It's, it's a hard place. Those guys make $11 an hour. It's, it's not enough. They're barely making a little bit more than poverty level at this time. Uh, you know, the, the people that we have to hire in there, it's, it's tough on them. And, we need to be able to increase uh, their wages. First, I want to apologize to y'all because that's not me. It's just when a kid gets hurt, it makes me very angry because I love kids. And Mr. Cooper, I'm sorry. You guys, I'm sorry. That's, that is not me. I apologize because I am a good person, but I don't know anything about jail itself. We need to get some of them out of there, make room for the drug dealers. Uh, and also, the drug inmates, the inmates at 14th Amendment, they, you have to, to uh, make sure they're not harmed in jail. That's why you have lawsuits. So we have to stop that. That way we won't have the lawsuits and it won't cost y'all any money. Thank you. I am very much familiar with, with the Sling County Detention Facility. <clears throat> there wasn't a day that I didn't go in there <clears throat> to see what was going on, what kind of problems they, they had, and to make sure that not only the safety of the, the uh, detention facility personnel, but the inmates were taken care of. <clears throat> we were able to uh, get outside help in the form of medical treatment, which has eliminated 99% of any lawsuits that the facility had received because that was the only thing that the inmate could do basically was to say, well, we don't have any medical on the staff. There is now. You know, so budget-wise, like I said, I was able to turn back $1.6 million to the taxpayers. 
by reviewing the budget daily, making sure expenditures were right. You know, so I do have that experience. Thank you. Describe your experience in jail operation. My experience in jail operations, Pulaski County Sheriff's Office has a bit, uh, jail facility that holds 925 people. Uh, I think this morning we were almost at 1,300 people. Uh, when we first opened that jail in 1994, um, they took us off, several of us off the street, and we, we went in there and worked in jail for several months. So I do know what it's like to work in jail. But most importantly, my experience with the jail has been my professional standards experience, my internal affairs. But most times, in the jail, the problems that you have are inexperienced people that are not trained enough and overcrowding. You combine those two things, it's a recipe for disaster. I also have worked on the budgets over there and helped them develop policies and procedures that they do in the jail through professional standards. The cost of an inmate to stay in that jail is approximately about $50 a day. State only pays you about $26. Uh, you've got to figure out how you're going to make your money in jail. Okay. All right, we'll move to the next question and we'll start this time with Mr. Wright. Question, what do you think is or will be the most important mission in the elected position you are seeking? <laughs> got to be the number one problem like that. That's the, the drug problem. Uh, again, it goes back to this is not the sheriff's problem, problem the city's problem, the bronze problem. It's uh, all of our problem. Until we unite and work together, it's going to continue to be a problem. Mr. Cooper is correct. Two deputies cannot work narcotics to be effective. It's going to take Mormon, a Saline County narcotics unit, and that's that you would have accountability back to each department. Each department would uh, supply de uh, officers or deputies to make one group because again, that's the only way that you're gonna be able to fight narcotics. You can't do it with two deputies. You can't do it with three police officers. You have to have a group and we've got to all be united. Uh, again, they don't know any jurisdictional boundaries. The same people that are dealing drugs in their community Time. are doing it in mine. More important, in the past when we hired the, the interim sheriff, which is there now, they showed about 50 items of internal and external problems that went on with the sheriff's department prior to him being hired. One of them was that they hired him because he had experience and he was honest. I, I have those same traits. Also, when you go in, you're going to have to have like 20 people, 17 people gone. So you've got to have a lot of training, a lot of experience, and taking on the sheriff's department with a lot of problems. So the first year, you're going to be having to do this. You're going to deal with the problems that are internal and external problems. I myself will deal with those problems. We will hire new people that will be trained and uh, we will have the experience that we need to get the sheriff back 80% up running where you respect that person, you respect the deputy, you respect us as the sheriff's department, you respect the badge. The badge is what we want you to look at and respect your children and your youth to look at us and say right. thank you.
life being, everything pretty much comes back to drugs. And the drug problem is out of hand. Um, the community involvement is what needs to be to take care of the problem. Best thing about this is I have the experience to step in day one of this election. I have the experience. These guys that's going to be coming in here, whoever wins this, first year they're going to be trying to figure things out because it ain't something you just walk into and, and just take over. You can ask the new sheriff that's there right now. He's still in a learning phase. The first year you're there learning to try and figure things out. The second year back to campaign. This is a two-year term. It's not an easy job, it's not an easy task. I can step in, we can keep things going, and we can attack the things that we need to attack right now. Thank you. The first thing I would do is hire a group of people to get the job done. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. The first thing I have to do is hire the right people to get the job done. And we know it's got it, we got a drug problem. So where you want to go, you want to go to people that's doing drugs that's in drug enforcement and see if you can't get some of them to come on board with you. That's the first thing you need to do. The second thing that I would do, I would make sure that I have the right points for each building and drug dealer. They're, they're working while you're asleep. They start building, uh, manufacturing drugs at 1 o'clock and they quit at 4. The way you catch them, you don't have to be there when they're, they're doing it. You can't, uh, they just remember what I'm saying. If you'll start at 1 o'clock to 4, you can, get, you can catch drug dealers.
I believe our main mission would be to put the shine back in Swing County Badge. Uh, we need more proactive officers, and we need uh, to, to better and more involvement with the people of Swing County. It takes two C's to become a good person, and that's common sense and common courtesy. And I'm equipped with both of them, and I look forward to serving y'all. Thank you. All right, we'll move to our sixth question, and we'll start uh, with Mr. Harris. department do to lower our ranking as being one of the counties known for meth production? Well, as you know, meth, it's very easy to be made anywhere you go. It can be in the back of cars, it can be in a house, and in the back room here, it can be made. The only thing is, during the summertime, you can smell it. So, you can smell it. They have it in our car, you can smell it. If you're a crime watcher here in the East End, that's what you want to look for. You know people around your neighborhood. You know what's going on. You need to fill us in. I'm sure you call me, we're going to do something about it. We're going to come to that door. And what we're going to do is catch them when they leave their house. That way we don't have to clean their house up. That's what heats up your expense and most everything you have in the sheriff department. If you're resting in a house, you've got to go clean it up. We'll get them when they get out on the street. We'll take their dope and their money. That way we'll give it back to the county. We can make a lot of money here. It'd be like a deal of business. We can all work together here. We're going to help everybody here in the neighborhood and uh, clean it up for you. I can guarantee you that. Thank you. Educating the public on methamphetamine. Community involvement, that's my biggest thing, is community involvement. We have good deputies at this point. I know we have a bad reputation, so to speak. But we have to have more deputies in order to do our job correctly. Like I said earlier, we are a reactive department at this moment. We don't have enough deputies to be proactive most of the time. We have deputies that want to be proactive. We have deputies that make traffic stops. We made one the other night that seized uh, about five, eight balls of uh, ice. It's just, for patrol, it's just a chance. It's a, it's a chance on a traffic stop or it's somebody that they know walking down the street. We just have to have more community involvement. We have to have more deputies. That's what's going to fight the crowd on the methamphetamine. Well, I think many years ago, Slane County used to be called the meth capital. Uh, we don't have the meth labs that we once had, but meth is still very present in Slane County. Uh, the way that we do this is our deputies are busy. They're answering calls. They, they take in approximately 16, 17,000 calls a year. That's with five officers. What we have to do is we have to take our part-time deputies that we've got. We've got to keep them in our neighborhoods. We have to take the information that we take from our uh, cards that our deputies turn in with, with the other information. Take the information we receive from our citizens and follow up. That's the way we can take care of things. The people of Saline County, we have to listen to y'all. Far too many times, y'all's phone calls come unheard. That's got to stop. We can take care of those situations if we'll get in there and, and listen to y'all. Thank you. I think I've already said mine because I said the drug dealers manufactured from one to four, and that's the way you're going to get them. I mean, they're getting it out there before y'all get up. I'm just saying, they make it from one to four, and ice is really, since you brought up ice, ice is really easy to make. You know, it's made out of ammonia. I'm not going to tell you else, but ice, you can snort it or you can shoot it up. 
and they do make ass too. And then there's heroin. So we have a bad drug problem. And I'm telling you, if we don't get on it, we got schools here, we gotta protect these kids. So I'm asking you to thank you before you vote. Thank you. What can the Sheriff's Department do to lower our ranking as being one of the counties known for meth production? The spoiler alert is meth's not being produced in Slane <coughs> County much anymore, and it's really not being produced much in the United States. We've outsourced it. Because of what we've done in cutting down the, uh, the precursors, the, uh, the cough syrup and all that stuff that we were using to make it, it's no longer being made here. It's being made in pharmaceutical grade ingredients in Mexico. The cartel is shoving it up here and it is very prevalent in this state and it's very prevalent in this county. It's not gone away. And because it's made with good ingredients now, you don't see the physical effects that used to be picked. The teeth aren't falling out, the bugs aren't on their face, and the hair's not going away. What used to be made in the, in the trailers or the shed or wherever, that was 60% pure. We're now looking at a 99.2% pure product that's coming up from Mexico. It's even more addictive. What we have to do is, what well, I said in the beginning, is retool our team. We're going to have to go after this stuff. At Pulaski County, we did $13 million worth of drug seizure last year. Over a million dollars worth of cash came back. With me being one of the officers that has been combating drugs since 2002, uh, working for narcotics, I can say for a fact that the meth labs have dropped 90%. We used to, we would get two or 300 a year and now we'll be lucky to get two a year. That's not saying that the meth isn't here because it is. Uh, it's the, like you said, it's the imported drugs. 